Today is going to be a lesson in vocabulary. What's up, people? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So today is gonna to be really, really fun. I'm actually really excited about this video. When I came up with the idea for this video, I thought to myself, like, all right, well, let me see what I can think of because I don't know if there's actually that many where it would, you know, be enough to make a whole video about, but woo! Yeah, there is. There is. So we just entered a new decade and it's crazy to me how a lot of DJs still use terminology that was coined back in the 80s and 90s. Legit like three, four decades ago. And I personally think if you make slight little adjustments on what you say on your website or just what you say in person, what's on your business cards, what's in your marketing, you can greatly increase your business. Now before I even start, I'm no marketing genius, okay? I'm not claiming to be an expert or whatever. I have a minor in marketing, so I guess I know a little bit, but like I'm not, I'm the marketing genius, so take it with a grain of salt, okay, whatever. If this offends you, I'm definitely talking about you. Sorry about you, <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm regardless, you know, what do I know, okay? Keep doing you. If you disagree with me, leave it in the comments. We'll debate it out, and you just keep it moving. I mean, I don't know. I really don't care if you change this terminology. I just want to make this video because I thought it would be fun as shit. <laughs> now, I want to start this video out at the most basic level our job title, right? How do we describe what we do for a living? Some terminology that we use to describe this is just straight up outdated, and some terminology we use to describe this makes no sense to me at all. We'll start with the outdated, disc jockey, okay? Disc jockey, you hear that? Do you hear that? What do you, what do you think? I'm a disc jockey. What do you think when you hear jockey? I, I think of a horse and like some dude with a funny hat. That's what I think of when I hear jockey, right? Disc, what's a disc? What is that? Do you even know what that disc is? Does your car have a disc player anymore? Hmm, does it? Probably not, because discs aren't a thing anymore. If you still use disc jockey anywhere on your website, anywhere on your business card, your marketing materials, anywhere, if you use that anywhere, take it off. Just shorten it. There's no need for it. There's literally no need for it. You could just say DJ. Everybody knows what a DJ is. A DJ is a disc jockey. You don't have to say disc jockey, just say DJ. Now that we established this, we're just DJs, right? I wanna also advise you to stop putting things before the DJ, like mobile DJ, mobile DJ. Why do you say that? The term mobile DJ became a thing because back in the day, the large majority of DJs were on the radio. If you heard disc jockey or DJ, you know, you were a radio guy, you were on the radio. DJs really didn't go to events. It was just live music and that was it. But as DJs started getting the equipment where they can travel or whatever, and they started doing events, you know, like personally and just not on the radio, then they started calling themselves mobile DJs. Cause hey, you know, I'm not just on the radio. I'll come and do your birthday party or whatever. I'm a mobile DJ. Well. Now in the year 2021, I'd say about 99.99999% of DJs are mobile DJs, including the radio guys, okay? There's not a lot of radio DJs anymore, but all the DJs are mobile. Whether you're a club, you're a wedding guy, you do mitzvahs, you do corporate parties, you're mobile. You, 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 that's what we do. It's the essence of what we do. We're all mobile. So it's redundant. You don't have to say that. It just sounds dated, you know? If you say to someone, hey, I'm a DJ, I bet you every dollar in my bank account, which ain't much anymore because it's fucking Rona, that they automatically assume that you have the ability to travel to their event and DJ for them personally. I, I, I bet every dollar. All right, now we got the obvious stuff out of the way. Let's get controversial. <laughs> the next term that makes no sense to me that I can't stand, it's been out forever, so many people still use it, and you may disagree with me, but whatever, is entertainer. Why do you call yourself an entertainer? Why, okay? Is it because you entertain people? Okay, that's, that's cool, but entertainer, doesn't mean DJ. Like you, you, if you hear entertainer, it could be a million things. It could be a musician, it could be a DJ, but it could also be a fucking stripper. Oh, we're entertainers. We're more than DJs, we're entertainer. Like all that says to me is that you can't mix. <laughs> That's all it says to me. In marketing, perception is a very, very, very big deal. And coming from someone who is a millennial, I will tell you that if you use the same terms that every other old guy uses, that every other outdated company uses, you are also gonna look outdated. So if you're finding yourself, you've been in the game for a long time, you know, and you're trying to freshen stuff up, you know, you're trying to appeal to younger couples, people that are getting married, people my age, you don't wanna use this outdated terminology. You just don't, trust me, you just sound like the other guy down on the street who's 65 years old with 400 years of experience. Moving right along to more controversial shit, let's talk about using DJ in front of your name. You know who you are, DJ Jim, DJ Bob, DJ Chris. That was a thing, it was a thing not too long ago. I mean, you know, this is something that, you know, kind of has been going out recently in the last couple of years in my opinion. So you're not super out of the loop, but 
I honestly think the best move is to kind of brand yourself. You know, instead of me calling myself DJ Nick Spinelli, just put Nick Spinelli. I'm Nick Spinelli. I DJ, but I do other things too, you know? So it's just Nick Spinelli. This is my brand, you know? Just brand yourself as yourself. I don't think you really need to have DJ in front of your words anymore. And you probably notice that a lot of big DJs that used to have DJ in front of their name stopped doing it. You know, DJ Vice is just Vice now. You know, DJ Sat One is just Sat One now. They don't really use the DJ term in front. If you're on SE Event Group's website and you're looking for a DJ, you know where DJ is. You don't have to put DJ Nick Spinelli. You could just put Nick Spinelli. It's implied that you're a DJ on a DJ website. You know, it's already implied. You don't have to put DJ in front like that doesn't make you any more of a DJ and this especially goes for all the people that don't have catchy DJ names you don't have a DJ name you literally just say DJ and then your first name that's all you do it's just oh this is this is the crew and then every person DJ Frank DJ Jim like you, th th that that makes no sense just say Frank and Jim you don't have to say DJ Frank DJ Jim we get it they're DJs unless of course your actual name is DJ like if you go by DJ like DJ Tanner from Full House or if your real name is like you know Dick John or something, so you go by DJ, then obviously say DJ, but you know, if not, then just don't. Now, while we're on this subject, I can't not mention like host or event host. This is the newest way to describe what we do. I do like it, you know, Jason Jan, I made it up a couple years ago. It's been catching steam, right? A lot of people are using it and whatnot, and I think it's a good way to do it. It sounds like professional and classy, you know, and it's worked. I mean, it's gonna get played out eventually because everyone else is doing it. So eventually in a couple of years when everyone's an event host, it's gonna be time to pivot again. And that's really what this is all about. You know, you wanna just keep with the times, you wanna just keep reinventing yourself and reinventing the way you market yourself, you know? So when everyone's using event host, then it's time to kind of figure something else out. You know, just like entertainer was cool. I never really liked it, but it was cool back in the day. But then when everyone started using it and now entertainer is, you know, synonymous with every channel cheap DJ, now you gotta kinda let it go, you know? So that's the lesson here with job titles, people. Continue to reinvent yourself, okay? Don't get stale. Don't just use the same terminology you've been using for 25 years because it's gonna slowly work less and less. But all right, so now we're done with the job title, right? We're done with the basic stuff. Let's just talk about some terminology that I see on a lot of DJ's websites. So numero uno of terms that you should be deleting off your website right now is free consultation. Is it free? Do you normally charge, but right now it's just free? Right now, like right now, in this month, this week, this day, it's free. But normally, you know, we charge for this sort of thing. We charge a fee to sit down with a potential client and try and sell them on our services so we can keep our business moving. We charge for that, we charge. That's what we, we charge for that. Normally we charge for that, but right now it's free, right? It's totally free now. Oh wait, no, it's free all the time? Wait, you never charge for it, ever? You've never charged for a consultation, ever. Oh, okay, so why does it say free on your website? How about hard drive size? I see this all the time as well, it's hilarious. It's almost like the size of a wedding DJ's hard drive is directly correlated with the size of his penis. You know, it's, it's just like, it's a direct correlation. You know, everyone likes to brag about this sort of thing. I have 300,000 songs in my library. We have every song ever made from the 1920s to today. I mean, you better have every song. I mean, you're a wedding DJ. You never know what you're gonna have to play. Every DJ on the face of this planet has a solid library of music. I mean, that's the core of what we do. You don't have to tell them that you have it. I mean, it's just kind of assumed. While we're on a roll here, let's talk about some other things like um, your equipment. Do you happen to advertise what kind of equipment you use? I have state-of-the-art equipment. We use Mackie speakers, professional pioneer mixers. Everything we use is state-of-the-art. State-of-the-art. State-of-the-art in itself is kind of like outdated. Like who the hell used it? I feel like that was like coined way back in the day, you know, when TV came out and they started doing TV commercials. Do you want a state-of-the-art Cuisinart mixer or whatever for your kitchen. It better be state of the art, okay? Like, it, it better be good. I mean, it's kind of implied. You know, you'll never see a high-end DJ advertising what kind of equipment they use. It's just implied that they're gonna come with some good stuff, all right? Or else they wouldn't be in business much longer, right? Talk about your competitive advantages. Talk about what you do best, what you bring to the table, not what equipment you can use. Any goober off the street can buy equipment at agiprodj.com. <laughs> bring it to an event and call themselves a DJ and turn it all on and try and use it. I mean, anybody, it doesn't take talent to buy equipment. So like the fact that you're advertising, it just, 
it's just, it's redundant, doesn't make sense. It's not gonna get you more events, trust me. And to take this even deeper, there's a lot of DJs that still advertise like, hey, we have wireless microphones, you know? We're gonna, we'll bring wireless mics. Or <laughs> if you use that as an upcharge, like normally we use a wired, but um, if you pay an extra $49, I'll bring a wireless, like stop it. Stop it. The essence of what we do is a wireless microphone. Like how do you, you, you don't advertise, everybody has a wireless mic. This one's ironic too, because I bet you every single DJ that puts state-of-the-art equipment on their website really doesn't have the best shit. They're kind of still using shitty equipment. <laughs> we use state-of-the-art Denon 4500s. We use state-of-the-art Mackie SM450s. Subwoofer, you don't need subwoofers with the Mackie SM450s. Oh, they have so much low end. But if you want me to bring one, I'll bring one for an extra 195. But anyway, let's review. So the consultations are always free. We don't gotta put that. No one cares how big your hard drive is, so stop bragging. And uh, you know, state-of-the-art equipment is kind of a given. Wireless microphones, big given, big given. Definitely expect one of those, right? Now let's talk about experience. Now for many DJs, this is a competitive advantage and something you might wanna mention. If you've been in the game for 30 years, 25 years, you've seen a lot of shit, you know what I mean? You've been doing this a long time. Sure, say I have 25 years of experience, that sort of thing. It can date you a little bit. So when you get to the point where it's like 35, 40, it's like, man, how old is this dude? Like, does he even like know what new music is, you know? So you could date yourself with this, but regardless, you know, experience matters. You know, anybody who's been on a job for a long time, I mean, that's something to brag about, that's something to Market. So like, I'm not saying don't put that. What I'm saying is stop combining your years. Here at Super Sounds Entertainment, we have 275,000 combined years of experience. The experience of our staff is just unbelievable. Hundreds of years of combined experience. I mean, Bill over there, he DJed for Jesus, you know, right before the, everything happened in Jerusalem. He was there. I mean, he was, he was playing those hits. DJ George was the official DJ for the Civil War. And I don't, I don't want to brag or anything, but he's a big reason why the South didn't win. You're welcome. But anyway, we got all the fun stuff out of the way. I want to end with something that's super, super important and, you know, something that I feel strongly about that you guys need to stop advertising. And that is affordability, okay? Talking about how cheap you are. We are affordable DJs. There's a lot of DJs that name their entire companies after being affordable or inexpensive or the right price for you or we provide great entertainment at the right price. There's nothing wrong with being affordable, right? Unless you're like undercutting your market, then you're an asshole. But regardless, you know, if you're affordable, if you're not comfortable with charging all this money, you know, everybody has a unique situation. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your market is. I'm not gonna tell you like, oh, Everyone should charge this much or whatever. But you don't want to advertise that because all you're doing is attracting couples that think of price first. We as DJs and MCs and event hosts and uh, entertainers, <laughs> we, we it's an art. It's an art what we do, right? We all have our own style. We have our own personality. And it's an art. And the best client you can ever have is someone that appreciates that art. Someone that wants a good DJ because they know the value of a good DJ. They know how bad it could be if there's not a good DJ at an event. You know, they see the value in that. And those clients will pay a little more because the value is there and they're actually way more easy to work with because when you value something, you're gonna vet like, you know, the candidates a little harder, right? You're gonna dig a little deeper. So when you actually pick a DJ for your wedding and you value his service, you picked him because you know what he does, you know like his style, like it fit what you wanted. So therefore, they know what they're gonna get. They're not gonna nitpick things, you know, because they know what they're getting with you. Does that make sense? Clients that don't value DJs, clients that spend $1,000 on an ice sculpture but $200 on their DJ, you know, they're gonna nitpick things. They're gonna get a DJ that's not gonna be great, right, but he's trying his best, whatever, and they're gonna nitpick every little thing. You'll see that these affordable DJs are the ones with the most bad reviews. So the bottom line is this lesson is really about attracting the right clientele. If you wanna be affordable, with your services. If you charge what you charge, that's fine, but you don't have to advertise that. Advertise your competitive advantages, advertise what makes your company great, and then when they come in, you can give them a price, and then they can be shocked. Wow, this is actually really affordable. You know what I mean? And it's great. You don't have to advertise that because all you're doing is attracting the wrong clients. But that's it, people. I hope you found this video useful. Please go in the comment sections. Let me know your opinions on all this. I'm happy to debate you guys. I'm actually excited to see this comment section. So blow that shit up. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I love you all and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.